Just a couple of things. I don't know if you watched the news this week. There was a couple of things went down um, politically. <clears throat> I didn't realise that some months ago they changed the law and where they decriminalised um, uh, marijuana or, or taking marijuana. They seem to have <clears throat> made a couple of changes around the law concerning the area of drugs in New Zealand. One of the changes that has been made, they seem to be stepping up a little bit with stricter penalties or harder penalties on those people that are importing and actually uh, supplying the drugs. But um, I knew that there was a law change going on around decriminalising uh, the smoking of marijuana or the personal use. What I, <clears throat> what I didn't realise, and you may not have caught up with, is the fact that they did not just decriminalise personal use of marijuana, but basically all drugs. So you can use pee, coke, heroin, anything you want nowadays. Um, basically, you're not going to be charged. If you are selling it, you could get quite a good stretch in jail, but if you're using it, you're not going to get charged. You're not going to be criminalised because we don't think it's wrong anymore. <laughs> we, um, these, these things, you think that little changes, what you've got to understand is what's happening to us as a society in New Zealand and, and the rest of the world is that there are, there are, these changes are coming very, very rapidly and they're incremental. So what they're doing is they're, change, they're not informing us fully of the law changes and exactly what's going on. And these changes are being made one after another, after another, after another. And they're basically systematically undermining the values of our society. They're systematically um, uh, beginning to undermine the thing that gives our society strength and hope and victory and overcoming and success. The other thing that they did this week is they brought out new legislation against our farmers. And, um, and basically, I don't understand all of this legislation. I haven't read it all, but I got the highlights of it. One of the things they're doing now is they're stopping any expansion of, um, of farming in New Zealand. And so there's a decision being made now. They're using the global warming. Oh, they don't call it that anymore, do they? Because it's, the globe's not warming. So they use the whole climate change, you know, the clean green thing, and saying that we're, we're um, uh, you know, we're over farming our land, we're over producing. Do you also realise that around about 60% of the total income that is created in New Zealand is created through farming? Do you also realise that they changed the law around oil exploration and, and the development of oil in our nation? And if the people up in New Plymouth will know all about this because hundreds of people lost their jobs because the government actually made um, policy changes that um, prevented um, oil expo exploration. The, the reality of what's actually happening, these things, some of these things um, for a nation, for the wealth and the well-being of our nation are, are vital. New Zealand is a small nation. And um, our primary industries that we actually have are very, very important to us. And if our, farming, if our farming community begins to fold and the export of farm products begins to fold in New Zealand, our way of life, our, um, our uh, how would you put it, our, our financial resource to operate effectively as a nation will greatly dim diminish. So what's actually happening is they're undermining, they're undermining, they're undermining constantly um, areas where we have an opportunity to be prosperous. Um, some of the things that are being promoted, I, I, I'm gonna, in my message this morning, I'm going to address a little bit more about this. I'm going to jump on it. But what you've got to understand is, um, is that there is an insidious scheme that Satan has an insidious plan to destroy the whole world and, is, and, and particularly humanity. And, um, and, and the, it, a lot of the stuff that's going on politically is actually demonically inspired to undermine and to pull down the whole fabric of our society. The, the difficulty is, what people don't understand, and I want to get into this a little bit more and a little bit more solid, is all of the problems in our world are spiritual. The, all of the problems that came into the world and have been fostered in the world and have grown in the world have a spiritual foundation. All of the problems in the world came about when man disobeyed God and sin and rebellion entered into the heart of man and then mankind began to live on their own ability. That When they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they thought they had all the answers. Humanity thought, we think we're like God. 
Humanity today is still believing that we can solve our own problems. And we, the reality of it is it's can't, we, can't. we can't. We can't socially correct what's happening in our world. We can't psychologically counsel three people through to victory. We can't, um, with natural economic um, uh, policy, we can't change the, um, uh, the financial stability or strength of every New Zealander. Because what we're doing is we're trying to treat the symptoms with, with worldly wisdom when the cause is a spiritual cause. And, and the cause is actually rebellion and sin. And the only answer is coming to Christ. It's, it is the only answer. The, the only answer to the world's problems is a spiritual answer. And it's getting out of the kingdom of darkness and coming into the kingdom of light and embracing the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, like, um, um, you know, like I, I think one of the things that you see going on politically in our society, do you realize that? You know, if they want to try and change the law about uh, suicide, for instance, <clears throat> who do they go to to get the recommendations? They go to the people that are strugg uh, have struggled or are struggling the most with suicide. You think about it. You think about where they go for their answers. Where does the world go for its answers? They say, well, you were suicidal and you, you're still alive, so you must have answers for suicide, so we're all going to come to you and say, how, how, what are the answers? How did you get, I, it was my friends came out. Oh, I was walking in the bush, you know, and I had this epiphany. I was, this was happening, that was happening. The world is so confused out there. <clears throat> I don't have a problem with suicide because I found God. See, we let, we, see what we're doing is so, so we got, um, you know, you got issues with uh, pornography. You got issues with marriages breaking up. You've got all these issues that are going on in our society. You've got issues with all sorts of division going on. The, the thing about it is, if you come to Jesus Christ and allow Jesus Christ to take control of your life, those issues get... Like, I'm not struggling with drug addiction. I'm free. I'm not struggling with alcohol or alcoholism. I'm not struggling with vaping. I've never tried it, never will. I'm not struggling with cigarette smoking. You know, I'm not struggling actually financially. I'm not struggling in my health. I'm not struggling with my mental health. I'm not, you know why? And the reason I'm not struggling in all those areas is because in 1975, I came to the realization that without the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, that my life was just getting up a total disaster. And when Jesus Christ came into my life, if you want to know how to change the world, it's one soul at a time. You know, like, the thing is, you don't have to, if you're not suicidal, if Jesus Christ has given victory, you don't have to address the issue, if you understand what I mean. So the world is running around in here, and they're so confused. The other thing that our socialist government does, and socialism, because ultimately, if you understand the socialist theory, what they want to do, they, they always go to the, um, the disenfranchised, to the broken, to the abused, the offended, um, the minorities, and what they actually do to us in our society is they try to divide us and separate us all up. You know, the, there's a scripture that says, if you strike the shepherd, you know, you scatter the sheep. When you bring division, when you bring in division into society, then society collapses. Because like it's, you, you know, it's like that old song, united we stand, divided we fall, and if our backs should ever be against the wall, we'll be together forever, you and I. Anyway, good song. <clears throat> what socialism, what socialism, the philosophy, what they want to do is they want actually the government to own all of the businesses and everybody in, the, in that society to be taken care of by the government. They actually believe, they actually believe that those people who get into government have more wisdom, more authority and more right to control you, your family, your finances, your future than you do. They will bring in laws whereby the government just, just incrementally begins to take over the authority of the parent in the home, the authority of the parent in education and the schooling program, the authority of the parent everywhere, and the government will get in between the parents and the children. Our children now, the children are empowered. I mean, if you go to give them a belt, they know the law now. They'll say, you hit me and you're, you're going down. You know, you do that. You do that and you're going down because what happened is the government has empowered the children over the parents. Ultimately, 
because they actually ultimately want God. They don't care how many people are unemployed. They're going to get you on the drip, right? And, they, and the government, what the government will do will control society by getting you on the drip. They don't want you to be independent. They don't want you to work hard, break through, make a career for yourself, provide for your family, have good governance in your home. Because it, it's an insidious, it's an insidious demonic thing that's going on to undermine the whole fabric of creation, the way God put us together. I mean, there's a lot more we could get into, and I probably will get into bits and pieces more. But um, I, I just want to, I just want to mention this: um, how, how, how what's happening today in society is they're trying to divide everybody. They divide us financially. How much rubbish, how much raving goes on about the poor in the nation? I mean, I got, I was quite upset when I heard that they were going to feed uh, the kids in school now. They're wanting to put millions and millions and millions of dollars into feeding kids at school. Parents should be feeding kids. Parents, look after your kids. Parents, you had them, you made them, you got them, you wanted them, you know, otherwise they would have been killed on the way. You got them, you wanted them, look after them. Look after them. That's the reality. It doesn't actually. It actually doesn't take a lot of money. It just takes. It, it just. You, as a parent, you just have to put the children first and make sure that there's some good food in their bellies. They're going to be looked after. So, so what's happening now? You see, the government. The, the government's taking over the feeding, feeding our children. You know, what I mean? and what it actually does. What it actually does is, you know, most of our society is going to go and get a free feed. They're just going to give up. They're just going, oh, the kids are going to get a free feed. For all of the parents that have been looking after their children, they can just give up now because the government's going to pay and feed everybody. But ultimately, who's going to pay? We're all going to pay. You're all going to pay out of your taxes. You're all going to pay for these policies to actually get put into place. They're, they're dividing everything. Like, um, uh, you know, like they're dividing us racially. Uh, they're dividing us socio socioeconomically. Um, we're divided now with gender. Um, we're religiously divided. We're financially divided. We're socially divided. We're politically divided. We're culturally divided. Um, every every area, every area, they they the what's happening in society. We're being divided. We're being separated and divided because there is a plan for us to come down and to be conquered, and it's a satanic-driven plan. It comes, from, it comes from the pit of hell. That, that's the reality of it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting now that the minority rule, even the minority rules, that you know, now what they do is they, the greatest heroes around now are the victims, the Me Too movement, the, all of the victim movements now. You know, like I just read about another reporter this week, he's got a thing in, in saying how when he was a political journalist, he got overwhelmed and, and started suffering with depression. And he's been open about it. So we make him a hero. We say, oh, what a hero. He's talking about mental health. You know, that, that, so he's, again, because what's actually happening with all this talk about mental health is there's no solutions there. It's just, let's all talk about mental health. Let's all be heroes. Or like that Bruce Jenner, who wants to dress up like a girl. You know, he's a transvestite. And then that was at the Time magazine, put him on the front page, and said, what a hero. He was a hero because he came out to the world and said, even though I'm a man, I want to dress up like a woman. Well, if you grew up in the Kardashian household, you, I can understand it, I just don't support it. <laughs> Trouble is, we laugh about the Kardashians and half of the young people in the world, if not three quarters of them, follow them and think it's awesome. They think it's awesome. It's a scary thing that's going on. So what we've got to do is we've got to get a little bit more savvy, church. We've got to get a little bit more aware of really what's going on. And um, last week I said, you know, we've got to vote people into positions of influence that have good moral values. But that, again, now I thought about it this week and I thought, no, that's the lowest common denominator. <laughs> you know, you get wicked people in there. You know, how many, how many people are, are worldly and have no integrity in politics? There's lots of them. And then I suggested maybe we should, pe we should put people with <clears throat> good moral values, which is like the next step up. But I was thinking about it more this week, and I thought, we just need Christians. We need Christian people who have had their eyes open and understand what's going on in the world around them. We need people that have faith 
in these positions of power. We need a people that um, share their faith, that stand on their faith, that are not afraid of their faith, that are not afraid to say, you know, that my life has been radically changed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to serve my community with, you know, under God's leadership, with God's revelation and God's wisdom. <clears throat> so I think now as we go into elections next year, we need to find out who the real Christians are, not the ones that, like Peter Dunn, a few years ago that floated all around the country going to church meetings. Remember him with his bow tie and his swishy hair? And uh, I went and sat at some meetings that were in some of the churches here in Christchurch and he talked about his Christian faith, Catholic, but, you know, Christian faith and how he wanted to do this and do that. The moment that he was assisted into a position of power, you found out that it wasn't Christian at all. It wasn't Christian the way we know it. It wasn't born again, spirit-filled, stand up for the Bible, God type Christianity, suddenly all of those Christian values were quickly dropped aside. He was in a position of power and he used, we were used. The church was used. So we need to find out who are real Christians out there. Real Christians that stand up for the faith and live, live it. You know, not guys that have been divorced five times and, you know, guys that have strong marriages, guys that still go to church, God, guys that tithe. You know, men and women that, that, that know God and uh, that can bring that, the godly perspective back into our politics. Amen.